wonderful to see all our Northwest London friends here today. Welcome to Watford and to this special time together. Now, before we go any further, I have some questions to ask. And there are prizes for correct answers. Right. Now, first question, you have to be younger than preteen to answer this question. Younger than preteen. First question, what is the name of this park? Yes. Ah, oh, has it slipped out of your mind? Not sure? Okay, the hand back there. I can't hear. It is Cashmere Park. Did you know that? Okay, well, you can have one as well because you knew. All right, there we go. All right, second question. Second question. Um, this is a tougher question, but I'm going to go for it again under preteen. There's a canal behind here. Oh, wow. What is the name of the canal? Does anybody know if they're under preteen? Does Raphael know? He's not sure. Does anybody under a preteen know? What do you think it is? The what, sorry? The Union Canal. The Union. All right, the Grand Union Canal. We'll give you that. Excellent. AR. Not bad, huh? Most of the adults didn't know that, did you? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, this is for anybody, anybody, including preteens. All right, we'll include the preteens. There is, as well as the canal, there is a river behind me. What is the name of the river if you are a preteen or younger? Sharon. Do you know? What do you think it's called? The River Gade is the correct answer. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. have two. I'm impressed. I am impressed. Okay. Now a question for up to teenager, including teenagers, and including teenagers. What crop? has been harvested in this river for hundreds of years. They've been harvesting a crop here for hundreds of years. Do you know what it might be? Does Raphael know? What is it, Raphael? Can you tell me? Sorry? Not sure? The cress? The cress, yes, water cress. Water cress is the correct answer. Can you have one of these? Yes, would you like to take it, Rev? Well done. Again, I'll bet the adults didn't know that. No, we didn't know. No? Watercress has been harvested here for hundreds of years. Bonus question, who knows? What is the particular quality of this river that means that watercress grows here abundantly? Who knows why? Yes? It's not stagnant, it's true. So I will give you one, but that's not what I was looking for. But anyway, that is true. It's a chalk stream. That is the answer. Wow, how did you know that? Ah, a little bit of, I think a little bit of collusion might have been going on there. I don't know. Okay, okay. Question open to anybody. Anybody, any age. What is the Latin name for watercress? Oh. Ah, I got the tough ones now. The Latin name for watercress. Does anybody know? The, 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 the official name. Not water, no, no. It's not, it's not aqua or anything like that. No Googling, Akin. No. No, <laughs> the answer is not Google. It's not Aqua, no, because it's it's not it's not Canadian. Okay, um, the first 
word sounds like um, it has the same ending as medium, kind of. No, was that? <laughs> Google. Did I say Google? You said not Google. I said no Google. Is what I said. Okay, it's no sh I'll get okay because I'm I'm a graceful man. All right, all right. Demonstrating grace there, nasturtium. It's a nasturtium aficionale. How about that? I thought someone would know. Okay, and this might need a Google, but if anybody knows it without googling, I'll be very impressed. What does the word nasturtium mean literally? Does anybody know what nasturtium actually means? Uh, the soldier. No, someone can Google it then. First one to Google it. What does nasturtium actually mean? Someone's got their Google app out. Nothing to do with water. No. Come on, somebody. Find it. Yeah, but what does it mean literally, the word nasturtium? In the Latin. Has anybody found it? No? You mean Google doesn't have all the answers? No. No, it means... It means twisted nose! Is what it means. Okay. Especially for you. <laughs> Twisted nose. Now listen. Don't say you don't come to church and don't learn anything. You've all learned something today. Uh, these will be distributed later. Twisted nose. The first time it was used for medicinal purposes was Hippocrates in 400 B.C and uh, in, uh, in, in the Greek area. Um, you, it's funny. <coughs> we come down to the river here, and there it is right there. I mean, that is the River Gade, right there. And you, there's things going on in that river we wouldn't know about. It's perfect for growing watercress, as opposed to most places. Strange and interesting things happen at rivers. Let's look today briefly at an interesting thing that happened at a river 2,000 years ago. A river may be just like this one. Acts 16. Let's go to Acts chapter 16 and have a look. Something that happened by a river. Acts 16 and we'll be looking at verses 13 to 15. It reads, on the Sabbath, a day very much perhaps like this day, we went outside the city gate to the river. Perhaps one like, just like this. Where we expected to find a place of prayer as we have been praying today. We sat down as most of us have here and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. When Paul and his companions went down to the river, 
They expected to find a place of prayer, but they did not know what else to expect. When you go with God to places, God does the unexpected. God does often more than we expect. They went to the river and someone ended up getting baptized, just like today. That a young man is going to be baptized today. Steve's come here to be baptized, amongst other things. And we're all going to share more in that a bit later. I'm so excited for you, Steve. And that's exactly what happened 2,000 years ago. And a gathering not dissimilar to this, and a river not dissimilar to this, they gathered to pray, and then someone got baptized. Her and her whole household. And I wonder at what expectations we've come with coming here today. I've been expecting to meet old friends, and I do mean old, Akin. <laughs> I've been expecting to see a number of children who I remember of being this tall, seem to have grown to this tall in what seems like a few weeks. I've been expecting nice weather. I've been expecting a good picnic made for me by my wonderful wife. I'm expecting lots of things. But what might God be doing, preparing, that I wasn't expecting? The question should be more in our minds, what's the unexpected that God might be doing today, rather than, is God going to fulfill my expectations? What will God say to you? I'd like to encourage you as we just finish this off in a moment to open your heart to something from God. Whether you've got a lot of faith or not much faith, whether you come here as a regular member of these congregations or whether you don't often come or you used to come and you don't often come anymore or you've never been before or you're young or old, I encourage you, to open your mind, like Lydia opened her heart to Paul's message, to open your heart and open your mind to whatever God might have to say to you today. Who knows what that might be? You know, it's said that this world is getting more and more materialistic. Actually, I don't think that's the case. I think the world is becoming more and more disillusioned and is putting material things in the place of where the vacuum is of finding things that are fulfilling and meaningful. And what we find with someone like Lydia in this passage is she had a lot of worldly success. She had this, she was a dealer in purple cloth and she had a household under her which indicates she was wealthy and, and well respected in her society. Yet she knew there was something still missing. See, spirit, religion might be uh, something that people don't trust very much, but spirituality is still very much alive in the hearts of all of us here today. When you talk to people, even people who've never been to church, and you ask them whether they have a faith or a belief in something beyond what we can see, they would say yes. But things get in the way. I, uh, there's a river that's special in my life. Uh, when I was growing up, I lived in Kent. And I lived in the countryside. And I was there this week, which is why it's on my mind. My family going through a difficult time with health issues. I was with my father this week at the hospital, at the GP practice. My mother is, more, is pretty much immobile because she hasn't yet had a hip operation and that was cancelled. My sister is in great deal of ag uh, pain with a knee problem and she was due to have a knee replacement and that was cancelled. And then while I was there, the phone line went dead in my parents' house so they couldn't phone out or anybody phone in. And uh, this last Thursday I drove my father to his cousin's funeral. His cousin died and my father was there to participate in the funeral and that took all day on Thursday and my father has an infection which means that he's in great discomfort and pain all the time and hasn't slept properly for a week, half an hour at a time, waking up, falling asleep. It's been a really tough time for them. And I was down doing my bit as the son to try and support them this week. And I was feeling rather overwhelmed. 
as hospital trips and medication to pick up and down to the GP and sorting out their phone problem and use, letting them use my phone to make their phone calls. And I, I, and I wasn't sleeping. I didn't sleep because my dad didn't sleep and he needed me to help him with some things. And, and it was hot, too hot. And I, I just not used to this. And I, I felt really overwhelmed. And on Thursday afternoon, there was a little window of time, a space. So I went out for a walk and I walked down the lane where I live. And I used to walk down that lane all the time when I was a teenager. In my teens, I'd go out for late night walks because, because I knew there was something bigger than life, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I couldn't discover it. I, I didn't, couldn't find the guides to help me. I couldn't find the people to teach me and show me. And I would go to church, but the answer didn't seem to be there. I'd read my Bible and that confused me more than anything. So I'd walk down the lane in the dark, late at night, where I could hardly see my hand in front of my face. And I walked down that lane this Thursday afternoon, and I walked down to a river. There's a river at the bottom, and there's a small bridge over the river. And I sat on the parapet of the bridge, and I remembered that 40, maybe 42 years ago, I sat on that parapet and I remembered that moment because I remembered at that time feeling a sense of despair. Can I ever find what life is really about? And I decided in the dark, bear in mind this is in the dark 42 years ago, in the pitch black, I decided I would jump into the river. I was wearing this kind of clothing. I had some, uh, some trainers on my feet. And I was, I don't know why, I, I, and it's not a, don't worry, I wasn't trying to commit suicide. It wasn't, it wasn't a deep river. It, the water came up to roughly my knees and it wasn't a big bridge, but it, it was a river and it was a strange thing to do. And you can psychoanalyze me if you like later. I don't even know why exactly I did it, but I think I did it. And I was thinking about this on Thursday when I sat on the parapet, thinking back to that time 42 years ago, the reason I did it is because I wanted to feel alive. It was a, a dumb, stupid thing to do. But it, for a moment, I felt alive. Because I felt that life had so much promise, but I couldn't find it. And so I would do anything to feel alive. And that was one of the things I did that night, just to feel alive. And isn't it a shame when we when we grab onto the material things of this world just to make us feel alive, when God has so much more for us, and we go from one relationship to another, we go from one job to another, we to another, and none of these things in themselves are wrong, but, but they're the wrong source of satisfaction of what life is really about. Even we go from one church to another, or we go from one religion to another. We're just trying to feel alive. And God says, I know how you can feel alive. I have the greatest adventure in life available for you. But there's two things that need to happen. I'm going to finish with this. Two things need to happen. What needs to happen is what happened in this passage. The two things that need to happen is this. That one person is ready to listen. And another person is ready to talk. In this passage, we have Lydia who listened to the message. And we have Paul who is ready to tell her the message. All it needs is one person who's willing to listen and one person who's willing to speak the truth of God's word to give someone new life. And Lydia found that new life in the waters of baptism that day, 2,000 years ago just like Steve is going to do today. And like Lydia walked in and was submerged in the water, so will Steve do that. And so have many of us here today. And I would like to encourage you to remember what that was like and why you did it. Because you knew God was giving you new life. For any of us who haven't yet done it, whether you are in your second phases of life or whether you're a teenager, I would like just to say to you that the answer to your angst, the answer to your despair, your answer to the gap in your life is not to jump off a bridge in the dark. The answer is to listen to what God has to say.
because what he has to say will change your life. Some of us have waded into the water. Some of us are still too wade into the water. But let's make sure that whatever we do, we look to God to giving us the answers to what life is really all about. Thank you very much. Amen.